Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, <clears throat> the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. The soldiers brought the apostles to the meeting and made them stand before the Jewish leaders. The high priest questioned the apostles. He said, we told you never to teach about this man. But look what you have done. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. You are trying to make us responsible for the death of Jesus. Peter and the other apostles answered, We must obey God, not you. You killed Jesus. You hung him on a cross. But God, the same God our fathers had, raised Jesus up from death. Jesus is the one that God raised to his right side. God made Jesus our leader and Savior. God did this so that all Jews can change their hearts and lives. Then God can forgive their sins. We saw all these things happen, and we can say these things are true. The Holy Spirit also shows that these things are true. God has given the Spirit to all people that obey Him. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> the day was Sunday. That same evening, the followers were together. The, Lord, the doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Jesus said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed the followers his hands and his side. The followers were very happy when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said again, Peace be with you. The Father sent me in the same way I now send you. After Jesus said that, he breathed on the followers. 
Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, then their sins are forgiven. If you don't forgive people's sins, then their sins are not forgiven. Thomas was not with the followers when Jesus came. Thomas was one of the twelve. The other followers told Thomas, we saw the Lord. Thomas said, I will not believe until I see the nail holes in his hands. And I will not believe until I put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side. A week later, the followers were in the house again. Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them. Jesus said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand here in my side. Stop doubting and start believing. Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, you believe because you see me. Those people that believe without seeing me will be truly blessed. Jesus did many other miracles that his followers saw. Those miracles are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Then by believing, you can have life through His name. The Gospel of the Lord. What scares you? I mean, really scares you. Not the momentary fright, but something that makes you live in fear. This time of year, we all fear tax season. We keep putting that off because we're afraid of seeing the final number. But there are things that leave us in true terror. Afraid to act. We are literally stopped by fear. When I was five years old, I was scared to death of the dinosaur that lived in my closet. He was a T-Rex. And when my parents put me to bed and left the room and turned out the light, the dinosaur came out and walked around my bed looking for the opportunity to get me. But I knew. I knew that if I pulled the covers over my head, the dinosaur could not get me. But there was a problem on that because if I kept the covers over my head, I couldn't breathe very well. So which fear did I face? The dinosaur? Or suffocating under the covers? Sometimes we are so fearful that we do not or cannot act. Because as frightened as we might be, we fear that what is out there is even worse. Why do people stay in abusive relationships? Because they're afraid of what is outside of that relationship, that it will be even worse. Fear is on the disciples' mind because really, only one thing has changed. Jesus is risen. 
He was dead, but now he is alive. But nothing else has changed. John tells us they are locked in a room because they are afraid. Nothing has changed. Pilate is still the governor. Herod still the king. Caiaphas still the high priest. The crowd still fickle. Every reason they have to be afraid still exists. Except that Jesus lives and comes among them. What happened? What happened that changed this scared group of men into people who instead would defy the authorities, go out and preach about the risen Christ, and find themselves standing exactly where he did before the council who wants to silence them? Did they sit down and talk with each other and decide, well, you know, maybe this might be a good thing to do. Let's go out and keep doing what Jesus was doing. Wasn't that fun? But look at what happened to him. A friend of mine has a collection of churchy t-shirts with neat phrases on them. My favorite is one that says on the front, the seven most sacred words in Christianity. It's the way we've always done it. The back of the shirt quotes an old hymn. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. What changed? Nothing except that the risen Christ came among them and breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now get out of here and get to work. All sorts of things go on. They show up on the National Enquirer when I'm going through the checkout line at the store. This was found or that was found. And it's going to turn Christianity on its head, upside down and inside out. Proof of this or proof of that or disproof of some other core belief. But nothing changes. People still believe. Luther said in his explanation of the third article of Creed, I believe that by my own effort or understanding, I cannot come to Jesus Christ my Lord or believe in Him. But the Holy Spirit has empowered me. God sends the Spirit on us. That's all that changes. And that is everything. We want proof. Like Thomas, we're reasonable people. If we're going to embark on some kind of grand but dangerous adventure, don't we want proof? Thomas asks for proof, and he, it's given to him, but do you notice that he does not take it? Thomas says, I wasn't there. I didn't see him. So unless I get proof, I will not believe. Well, good for Thomas. Over the years, he's been called Doubting Thomas. I call him Demanding Thomas because he wants proof. Thomas, it is said, became a missionary to India where he was martyred with a spear. 
all of these disciples who were locked in a closed room out of fear, except one, went out and did as the Lord commanded them, and all of them were executed. That doesn't sound safe to me. And so Thomas demands proof. And Jesus appears and gives him proof. Here, Thomas, you want proof. Put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. But the interesting thing is Thomas does not look for the proof. He simply declares, my Lord and my God. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what changes, and that is the only thing that needs to change. God has come to us and we remain scared, locked in our rooms. We remain in bed with the covers pulled over our head because we're afraid of the imaginary dangers that are stalking around our bed or around our home or around our lives. And the only thing that makes us safe as we go out are these words. Receive the Holy Spirit. There's a book on my library shelf. The title is interesting. It's called Locked in a Room with Open Doors. Did you ever think of that? What truly imprisons us? Walls? Bars? Chains? What imprisons us is our fears and our doubts. And our escape is not necessarily from any physical situation, but from the prison of our own making. The chains that we put on ourselves and each other, the rooms which we lock ourselves in, and God sets us free from that with simple words. Receive the Holy Spirit. It is one thing if Christ is risen. It's quite another thing if Christ is risen for you. If Christ is risen to open the doors of your prison, to set you free from what keeps you in fear, who are you going to trust? Your own ability to deal with what frightens you, your own proofs that everything will work out okay, or the God who comes to you and says, receive the Holy Spirit. As you have been forgiven, so forgive. As you have been brought out of death into life, announce that to others, that they might do the same. So here we are, closed in a room, and we live in fear. Who's walking down the street with a gun? Who might walk in through that door? What might the doctor tell us the next time we go to hear about the test results? Will I have enough money to pay that tax bill? For all of the things that we fear, Jesus comes in and says, don't be afraid. Notice how that runs through all the Gospels. To the shepherds, don't be afraid. To the scared disciples in the boat, don't be afraid. To the women who come to the tomb, don't be afraid. Oh, there are things to fear out there. 
There are things to worry about, but God has entered through all the barriers that we put up and said, receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Regardless of all that you see on TV or read in the papers, whatever is there to frighten you, God says, receive the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Life has changed. But only one thing has changed. We have received from Christ the power of adoption, the spirit of fearlessness. Now go tell the news. Amen. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Jesus Christ, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God of resurrection, fill us with your Holy Spirit to announce the new life you give through Christ Jesus. Lead us to people who need to hear good news. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal, for Christ Lutheran Church, for St. Luke's, and for Greats Lutheran Church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Breathe new life into all creation. Send sun to warm and water to saturate fields, yards, and mountains. Set all things in order that abundance may come forth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Open paths for cooperation between nations to care for refugees, survivals of natural disaster, and people living through war. Bless the efforts of peacemaking troops, diplomats, and relief organizations to foster peace in the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your enduring mercy to strengthen those who persevere in difficult times especially those we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. For Bob and Ron. <coughs> Guide them to places where they may find shelter in your presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gather together the various gifts of this community and unite us in praise. Harmonize the sound and movement of instruments, hands, feet, and bodies. We give you special thanks today for those who are makers of music. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have united yourself with the saints at rest through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead. Join us all together in his resurrection on the last day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We deliver all this into your care, O God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace. God's peace. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, grant us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. 
Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen finish. We believe Christ will come down again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awake your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord Jesus. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the blessing of Christ the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. <laughs>